What's up, fam? Y'all know I'm here to get y'all real households of Potomac. This this might be like all the other ones where I'm gonna just run through them. We'll see. So Sharice has her party. No fucks. Uh, Giselle and Robin take their kids horseback riding, and um, they want to talk about the whole biracial thing. No fucks. Karen um, is talking to her daughter, pretty much telling her daughter, bitch, I don't want you to be like me. I don't want you right here, with, you know, spread low, busting it wide open for these motherfuckers when you take your ass over to college. Can we shake on it? They shake on it. Why well, I don't believe, uh, Raven, she gonna fly like an eagle and mm -hmm, she gonna fly on some dick. But, hey, I'm just saying, I hope she doesn't. I hope she doesn't. But, shit, we were all young. Okay. Shit, I lost my damn vajank to tear at 14. They've been celibate every motherfucking since. Y'all do the math. So, <laughs> and I ain't even had a damn talk about my motherfucker. I'm telling too much of my business right now. Anyway, <laughs> woo. Um, what else we got? Uh, you got Katie. Is it Katie? Yeah, Katie and Andrea in the car. And you know they talking and shit. Uh, she's going to, I guess, like a little farm that she has. Her little quiet place. Okay, that's cool. And you know she mentions how you know, uh, you know, I guess the freaking frat of this motherfucking show, you know, just can't have a drink and let they motherfucker head down and have a good motherfucking time. And she was like, yeah, because you know they was talking about how you know um, Michael was groping your ass. And here's the Andrea played the shit off like, yeah, he always had it in. You know, he always had the hot for me ever since I knew him. And they laughed the shit off again. It ain't that fucking serious, but. I know to some of y'all it is, and we talked about it in the comments. I'm just saying, in my opinion, it ain't that fucking serious. And if Michael ain't got a problem with it, if Andre ain't, <clears throat> Andrew ain't got a problem with it, if the women that is fucking these two ain't got a problem with it, why the fuck y'all got a problem with it? I'm just saying. Well, I'll be right back when this shit come back on. <laughs> okay, so, um... What's the girl's name? Katie still wants the ring. And uh, Ashley still wants the baby. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> they put, <laughs> and you got that song about, so how, you know, I have still children that are my peers. Like, yeah, yeah, that's kind of great, baby. That's kind of great. But uh, was I the only one? Well, I'm pretty sure I wasn't the only one, but I know y'all called that re <laughs> that Michael gave it because he had, I, I guess they were sea orchards or whatever the fuck it is. I don't know what it is. That's too rich and expensive for me. I probably need this shit no damn way because probably ain't coach. But, you know, he wanted uh, his uh, wife to consume it, and she was just like, no, it's too salty. This and that. He's like, oh, you know, any uh, woman who is classy or something to the, that expense, uh, eats a sea or <laughs> she's like, what you trying to say? You like the shoe fits? I'm like, <laughs> oh shit! But you know what? It's it's nice when you know a couple can do that to each other and read the fuck out of it. I'm just saying, but come on now, Ashley, you just step it up. <laughs> he done read the fuck out your ass. <laughs> the girls of substance happen. Okay, and of course, uh, the women getting invited to the damn uh, lunch and, and um. It appears Andrea is about to propose, which I think we all kind of sort of saw that. I don't know yet. I won't know till it come back on, so we'll see. So it's official. They are engaged. And I think we all saw her coming, you know. Hey, Andrew did it, but I mean, he wasn't smooth in delivery, you know, especially when us as look girl. And I think she even knew it because she ain't even give us that whole, <laughs> she ain't even give. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, I don't give a fuck. So they're engaged. Uh, Giselle um, talks about her father, who uh, did was a civil rights leader in his own right, and had even said that uh, Herman uh, has gotten Congress, I guess, to uh, recognize or honor her father. And he comes over and whatnot. And before I talk about a story that he said, I want to say that I loved seeing Giselle with her girls. And even walking them through how to cook. I'm just going to be real. It ain't that many women who know how to cook anymore. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying not. And I'm not trying to be chauvinist or anything like that. But I just think in general, men and women, you know, we should know the fundamentals. We should know how to cook. We should know how to clean. We should know how to take care of our mother and selves. You know, where anybody that we get with should be an add-on to us. Because those are real shit. If you can't do the basics that I could do, and if all you good for is being a fucking... You, Y'all know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to keep it PG right now, okay? 
And I know you're probably like, motherfucker, when do you ever right now? Okay. But he tells a story which which I was so here for. They were doing a fundraiser, he and uh, Dr. King, and um, they didn't have enough money. Like, they didn't raise enough. So Dr. King got on his knees and prayed, got up and said to him, give away the tickets. And, you know, uh, her father was kind of looking like, Burr? So then the limo pulls up and a man gets out. Said he wants some tickets, wrote a check for twenty five thousand, I believe, gave it to him. And as uh, her father was about to take the gift to him, the words he uttered were the same that Dr. King uttered, and it was "Give those tickets away." And I just loved how, just to me, that like I felt that because when you, like I said, when you are praying, fool, and when you know the Lord, and when you are in tune, hey. Hey, you you can speak some things and you can get some stuff shaking around here. So I just want to talk about that. Ooh, ooh, hold, 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 oh shit! You the, 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 damn, but talking with you, you gonna be motherfucking turf shit, and, and then Ralph to give it to us, baby. Oh shit! Oh shit! I'm mean, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm sorry. That was impromptu. Be back. So all the ladies are getting ready for this. Uh, come to Jesus meeting. Um, and I don't know if anybody else called it, but when Cherise walked in, little white baby <laughs> looked at her like, who are you? <laughs> Almost kind of like the whole, all right, why she here? Hoppo, who this woman? <laughs> if y'all can go back and like, because they had to make the face but her now, but that shit was so damn funny. Y'all know it's a little shit that tickles me now. But, okay. Uh, Katie is late, so she's not even there yet. They begin talking, and um, Karen is the first to go, and she pretty much is like, you know, you will never be friends with my daughter. You know, you're 10 years younger. And now she's like, you know what? Do you think I'm going to have her take her out to do body showers or shit like that? And she was like, you know, since you talked about Michael, you know, why don't you let him get up in you? Because, you know, because talking about his pullout game strong, let him ejaculate. And I'm just kind of like, ooh. <laughs> And, and pretty much tell her, why don't you become a mother of your own? Because I think she was trying to say, when you become a mother of your own, and to have someone say that to you, you will kind of understand why I feel the way that I feel. And I think that's what she was trying to say. She just didn't articulate that correctly. Or, I'm sorry, she didn't articulate that in such a way that it will come off, and that is what she was trying to say. Okay, so we are almost at the end of this reunion so i don't think this i'm sorry we're almost at the end of this uh season and i don't know if we're gonna end on a kumbaya it's, it's not looking that way but uh, uh that, okay so i talk i don't know if i already talked about it if i did y'all forgive me you know i'm, I'm just saying because I'm, I'm not adding this shit out because it's just too late not for me to be doing all them damn adding shit but katie walks up and the baby is looking at the whole motherfucking table like that crazy. I'm telling y'all, this baby is giving me my motherfucking life right now on some real shit. I am laughing at this damn baby. But, you know, the whole um, biracial thing comes up and whatnot. And um, Robin wanted to school um, Katie. And it's one of those where... Hey, call me Betty. I'm not in it. Because, hey, it is what it is. You know, be who you is, what you want to be, this, that, and the motherfucking third. You feel me? And it went from them having their discussion to Giselle jumping in and saying, well, I was the one that said that I saw this. But it was this one <laughs> being very dismissive almost and talking about Katie as if Katie wasn't there. And then, you know, shit just fucking went left. And, you know, Katie said that me being uh, declared that I'm biracial means that I own the fact that I am black, but I also own the fact that I'm also Caucasian. And, hey, it is what it is. You know, people going to feel the way they feel. You know, I just hope and pray that she embraces the fact that she is black and hopefully she teaches her children the same thing. That, you know, regardless of what your skin color may be, 
hey, this is what it is. Or if that's, and from what I get, I don't think that's how she looks at herself. It's just that, you know, regardless of what I mix with, this is who I am. The whole duality, and I'm, hey, I'm good with that. I just don't want her children to get lost in the shuffle of not really having that identity. Because I'll be the first one to say, and I mean, actually, I said I own me. But I would hate for her children to walk around being very ambiguous about their identity and having society have to let they ass know what good time no motherfucker. So, yeah. But again, y'all let me know how y'all feel about that down below. And I'll come back with my little summation conclusion and hey, we just gonna move on and that's gonna be it. So, Sharice is the one, I guess, to bring all the women back together and just mention how it's the respecting of boundaries that is the issue. They agree to respect boundaries and that's it. Now, just a couple of things that I want to touch on. Andrew and Katie says that uh, they, uh, were, they broke up, got back together, kind of on again, off again, and but right now they're back together and yeah <laughs> Shay possible engagement 2000, 2022 and even for on the pre for the reunion you know shady ass uh and he was just like I see you no Andrew and no ring what it do so I this was during one of those periods that they broke up and again in my opinion, this shit was only done because the camera was there, and I think that he knew they were wrapping up, so he didn't want to look bad on camera. So, y'all. What else? I'm trying to try to go down a line of interesting shit. Oh, and I feel so bad for uh, uh, Robin. Apparently, their house got foreclosed on, so they moved to a uh, smaller house, but they had to throw in with an updated kitchen, but you know, just the whole foreclosure thing, yeah, that shit was uh, hella sad, but you know, hopefully they're working through it. We're gonna see the status on their relationship, and um, yeah, Ashley, you know, her and her husband didn't break even, so you know, he ain't, he's, his pullout game still strong than the motherfucker. Uh, don't really care about you. I'm just trying to look figure out why the fuck she look like mother of the motherfucking deacon boy. I don't know. I don't know, but okay, she brought the church head out on us now. And when they did Karen's whole thing, Raven's name is spelled R A Y. Raymond, Ray, and then V I N as in Vin. I'm just like, child, if that ain't bougie, that's just straight ghetto, but. Anyway, that's all I got. You guys let me know how y'all feel about this season in its entirety, how y'all feel about this finale. I partially wasn't here for it, you know, but I did tell, you know, uh, you know, one of my subscribers that I will look into it. I'm hoping the reunion gives me what the fuck I need because you know how they only sh like the re like the uh, trailer highlights the good shit. So I'm hoping there's more substance. And because this is like the very first reunion, I think it's going to be. And one thing that I do want to mention before I go ahead and chuck the deuces is the fact that they show that baby looking at them. You can kind of tell that a lot, like a lot of what we saw was organic as a first season. I think that if the same cast come back, the second season might be organic. But I think anything after that, they're go it's going to be one of those where. And I do believe that next season, if there is a next season, they're going to purposely come with the antics and whatnot. But I think everything after the second, everything after the first season, the first season will always be organic. The second season, man, and anything after that is just going to be like, okay, we know they're just putting on to give us some shit. But we will definitely see. So this is my review for the season finale of season one of The Real House Hose of Potomac. You guys let me know how you feel, and I will see you guys next week for that. I might do Shot of Sunset. I'm not quite sure. Y'all let me know down below if y'all want me to. Again, if they give me the same fuck shit they gave me last season, I might do a couple episodes, and I'm going to display the face of the earth, but we'll see. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Wait, is it for Love Hip Hop ATL, uh, the uh, first episode? I think this is what, season six or seven? I don't even fucking remember, but we'll see you tomorrow. Holla at your boy. Peace. <laughs>